Hey, my Young and the Restless fans. Yes, it was an explosive episode today. And yeah, we got to unpack it. First, Kyle threatens Chance. Victor blows up at Adam for getting Sally pregnant. And Phyllis unalives Jeremy Stark. Welcome back to CBS Soap Dish Recap as we recap everything CBS Soaps, both the Young and the Restless and the Bold and the Beautiful. This is your Young and the Restless Recap for April 17th. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and unpack this crazy episode. So let's start out over at the Abbott Estate where we see Jack and Kyle. And Jack, yeah, he's fighting for his woman. Jack thinks in his head he has found a real woman in her. And Jack says that he will find the truth and free her so they can get married. Kyle, however, is frustrated that Summer thinks Diane did this. And I'm telling you, when the truth come out, everyone is going to be shocked. And Phyllis, you're going to get a bombastic side eye. Now, Kyle and Jack are wondering what the evidence that they have against Diane. And I'm pretty sure Stark planted it with a little bit help from his wife, Phyllis. Now, Kyle thinks Stark framed Diane for payback because of what Jack and Diane did to him. And then he also started blaming himself for it. Now, Kyle thinks that it was Stark that killed Phyllis, and Jack thinks that he would unalive again. I mean, wow, wait till they find out the truth. So now we're over at the GCAC where Summer comes in and starts talking to Chance, and they both think something was off the night Phyllis passed. Now, Summer is feeling guilty about how she treated her mother. She said that she treated her like garbage. Now, Chance told her, look, I don't have any leads. And of course, Summer wants to reenact the scene. Girl, stop playing cops and robbers and go back to Marchetti. I mean, as far as you know, uh, the person that's responsible is already in jail. So why are you reenacting this? I mean, you do not work on the police force. Now, Chance offered to call Kyle, Nick, or Daniel, and of course, she scoffed at that, saying the only thing making her feel better is that her mother's perpetrator is being punished. Now, she wants to talk about the investigation, but of course, Chance refuses. Man, Chance, you should have never told her about the poison in the first place. Boy, he talks too much to be a private investigator. And then guess who shows up? None other than her husband, Kyle Abbott, and is blaming Chance for putting the wrong ideas in Summer head. Honey, uh, Summer don't need any help with that at all. Now, he's telling Chance that his mother isn't an unaliver, but we know who mom is. I mean, don't we, Summer? Of course, though, Summer defended Chance. So meanwhile, back over at the Roach Motel with the newlywed, Stark tells his bride that he will unalive her before he goes back to prison. Now, Phyllis says, look, I'll just tell everybody it was my idea. He told her uh, that would be too many holes in the story. And some of them, of course, is located in this story already, which, of course, is why Chance and Summer are trying to reenact this whole thing anyway. He told her he would be implicated. Setting Diane up is not looking too good, huh, Phyllis? I mean, look like you got the bad end of the deal. So then we see Phyllis having a change of heart. She tells him, look, it was wrong to do this. My kids don't hate me like I thought. And then Stark told her, uh, no, you need to leave town now. Now, Stark also told her, look, uh, yeah, there's a change in plans. And guess what? You're leaving town with me. Talking about drinking tropical drinks together and watching the sunset. Then things took a turn when Stark grabbed Phyllis and she asked, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Now, he wants a kiss from his bride and she made a run for that door, but he caught her. He told her unaliving her would be a victimless crime because guess what, sweetie, you're already dead. He walks toward her with some scissors. I mean, he ran into the bathroom behind her and she was screaming. 
Now, while the turnabout tables are going on over at the Roach Motel, over at Crimson Lights, we see Adam and Victor. And poor Victor is like, what the heck is going on with my kids? I walked in on Abby. I don't really know what's going on with my daughter, Victoria, and her CEO, Nate. And now my two sons, Adam and Nicholas, fighting over Sally Spectra. And so Victor asked Adam, why are you still chasing after a girl who's clearly into your brother? And Adam was like, uh, I don't know if you realize, but we are joined for life. And of course, Victor is looking quizzical on his face like, what are you talking about? Adam is like, oh, you don't know, huh? Uh, well, guess what? You have a grandchild on the way. Sally is pregnant and I'm the daddy. And so, of course, Victor was like, are you sure? Where was the test? Uh, does Nick know about it? Is she keeping it from him? And Adam was like, oh, no, he knows about it. And yes, he's still dating Sally. And of course, the look on Victor's face was like, what the French toast? Speaking of the simpery Nicholas, over at the GCAC, we see Sally just gleaming about babies, talking about Tessa and Mariah's new baby, Aria. Nicholas ain't even trying to hear it. She also brought up the fact that guess who's coming to the next doctor's visit? Yeah, not just you. Your brother is going to be there too, and he was looking sour. Yes, he was. But uh, unfortunately, this is what your life is going to look like, Mr. Nicholas, if you continue to date the mother of your brother's baby. So now we're over at Society and Christine is working there and Jack shows up because he needs the name of a good defense attorney for Diane. Because nobody in town or even in Chicago or anywhere else want to take on Diane because of her history of jumping ship and disappearing. So Christine was like, yeah, I wish you luck, but I can't talk about the case. So Jack, he decided to call Michael, which puts him in a very, very sticky situation because Phyllis was his friend, but so is Diane. And finally, the craziness back over at the Roach Motel, there is a body wrapped in a shower curtain with scissors with all type of red stuff on it. And Phyllis grabbed the scissors. She is covered in it. And she tried wiping it off with towels. She then dragged her husband's body out of the motel. How realistic is that? I don't know because I know dead weight is heavier. But anyway, they made it look plausible. But I mean, hey, he wanted a kiss. She was like, I don't think so. And it cost him his life. So look like this is guy number four. I mean, she's rolling up men in rugs now in a shower curtain. I mean, man, writers, you got her looking crazier than ever. And since she didn't even know who he was trusting him to poison her. I mean, yeah, I don't think Diane ever killed anybody. She's extremely and highly manipulative and calculating. She liked to poke at people, but I don't think she got any blood on her hands. So yeah, this is going to be interesting to see what Phyllis do next. Okay, so there you have it, your Young and the Restless recap for Monday, April 17th, 2023. Stay tuned for the bold and the beautiful recap also for today. And until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Bye!